Hi, boys and girls. Today, we are gonna take all this great information we have learned about analyzing text, and we are going to see how much of this we can use to analyze a book. So I'm gonna read aloud the book, and then when I'm done, I'm going to talk about some things that I noticed that are on this little chart here of different ways to analyze text. And so you're gonna be able to see how, now that I've learned all these different things, I can really look at a story and analyze it. I, can, I know how to look closely. I know what to look for. I know how to think about the story in different ways and tell about things I'm noticing. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I would do that as a reader using these things and then I'll give you a different story to try it out at home. All right, so I'm gonna to try to pick as many of these as I notice as I can, but I'm not just gonna list them. I'm gonna tell where I notice them. If we were at school, what I would do is I would have you put a sticky note in a spot in the book and I would have you tell me, you know, on this page I noticed that they were speaking to the reader or on this page I noticed that, um, that it's repetitive or on this page I noticed that they used sound words. All right, that's probably how I would do it. Well, since you don't have sticky notes um, to show me and you don't have the physical book, um, I'll just have you tell me um, at this part of the story, this is what I noticed at this part of the story, this is what I noticed, kind of like that, okay? So I'm gonna start with this book. This is an awesome book. It's called The Bear Ate Your Sandwich. So here we go. By now, I think you know what happened to your sandwich, but you may not know how it happened. So let me tell you, it all started with the bear. Okay, right away, I already notice they're talking to me, the reader, because they're saying you and they're talking to me. So they're talking about it like it's my sandwich, right? How it, ha what happened to your sandwich? It's like I am in the story, okay? The morning air was warm and bright when the bear stepped out of his den. He stretched and sniffed. The scent of ripe berries drifted toward him and led to a wonderful discovery. After a berry feast, the bear curled up in the sunlight and listened to the buzzing of the trees. Before long, he was asleep. By the time the bear opened his eyes, the buzzing had become a rumbling. He was being quickly swept along like a leaf in a great river. The forest disappeared in the distance and the high cliffs rose around him. Once the rumbling stopped, the bear found himself in a new forest. It was nothing like he'd ever seen before. Okay, right here, I noticed that the pictures are helping me because if the pictures were not here, I would really think he was in a new forest. But because of the pictures, I can tell he's actually not in a forest at all. He is in a city, but the pictures are the only thing that's telling me that, okay? So I need them. And the author knows that, and they made those pictures like that for a reason. This forest had many great climbing spots. The trees were still itchy here. See, so the bear doesn't know the difference because the bear has never been to a city before. There was good bark for scratching and the mud squished nicely under his feet. See, look at this. The pictures are helping me again. Is it really mud he's stepping in? No, I can tell it's cement that he's walking in fresh cement. And here when he says the trees are still scratchy or itchy, it's a light pole. See, the pictures are helping me. There were many interesting smells in this forest, but some of the tastiest ones had already been found. Kind of runs in, he thinks that's a bee, but it's a person. Leafy green smells led the bear to new fun. And that is when he saw it. It was there, your beautiful and delicious sandwich all alone. He waited to make sure no one saw him, not even the sandwich, before he made his move. 
It was such a great sandwich. The bear loved it. It was, but just as he was almost finished, he heard sniff, snuffle, slobber, snort behind him. Ah, there's sound words. So, so far I have found illustrations to help the reader, speaking to the reader and sound words. He had been seen. Once again, the pictures help me. If they were not there, I would not know who is seeing him. The bear was so surprised that he ran out of the park and down the street until he spotted a very tall tree. See, I still would not know that the dogs had spotted him if it were not for the illustrations. From the top of the tree, the bear could see his forest. It was time to go home. Is it a very tall tree? Mm -mm. It's another light pole. The waves rocked the bear and he began to doze. When he opened his eyes, he heard the breeze in familiar branches and the birds and bugs evening song. Well, the bear made it home just fine. So that's what happened to your sandwich. The bear ate it. I saw it all. I tried to save your sandwich. I was able to save this little bit of lettuce here. The bear dropped it as he ran off, but I couldn't save the rest. I'm sorry to have to tell you about your sandwich this way, but now you know. Okay, so now I know something different. Now I know that the dog has been telling the story the whole time and they really weren't talking to me, they were talking to this little girl, but it sounded like they were talking to me. It's almost like I am the little girl and the bear is talking to me. So this is very interesting, right? There's not a section there on our chart, but we can still notice it. We can notice who is telling the story and change our mind because we learned new information. Ruff, 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 ruff. So there he is. And I see those sound words again. I also kind of think that maybe none of this actually happened and perhaps the dog made up the entire story <laughs> to get away with eating the sandwich, which would be another humorous thing. It would be just like a funny story that's made up to make us laugh. So those are some ways I analyze the story. I could also talk about the genre, right? Realistic fiction, uh, no, because the dog is talking, right? So it would just be fiction. Um, it, it, it kind of goes in time order, not really through a day. I guess it kind of does. Um, not a circular story, unless you count that he did end up back in the forest at the end. Um, but we definitely talked about some of the big ones, the sound words, the speaking to the reader and the illustrations helping us. And we knew the genre. So we were able to talk about four different ways to analyze this text because of what we've learned. Okay, I would like you to come up with at least two, maybe three ways that you can tell me about the book that I'm going to give you. Okay, think back to this poster. And if you need to rewatch the video to look at the poster, to remember, some of the ways you can analyze, that would be okay too.